Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Little Pearlo dance for you there. If uh, you like funny stuff, stick to the end. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff at the end that are pretty funny. I think so, anyways. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about the deals that kind of happened on the weekend, some of the deals that happened on the weekend, some of the happenings that may happen in free agency land. It's this week. I'm so excited. I already Perlo dance, but I'm Perlo dancing on the inside. Uh, I love free agency, man. It's like my favorite thing in the land. So we're going to take a look at some of the th- happenings that look like they're for sure going to happen. Uh, we're going to look at some of the trades that happen with Florida, Philadelphia. We got the Edmonton Oilers, and I believe I got the New Jersey Devils in here. Um, pretty exciting stuff. You tell me in the comment section what you think. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Do you like every team or every uh, any of the all four sports, North American sports? Do you like teams on those sports, in those sports? Because Steel Flyers does all sports, all teams, all the time. Come check it out. You see content like this. Uh, we are growing. We're getting, we need more uh, content creators, actually. If you have always thought about doing that and you're like, I don't know, whatever, just give it a shot. Put it in the comment section. We'll check you out. We're looking for some uh, new talent to be able to be part of our team. Uh, it's a lot of frolic, and I myself am getting uh, a little bit of a living out of it. So if you like to make a little money and talk about your favorite sport and team, hey, Give it a shot. Uh, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, I do. I'll be doing tonight. This is Monday. Uh, what is it today? I don't know. 26th. Monday the 20th. I don't even pay attention to the date now for what I do. It all melds into one. Uh, the 26th. I do from 3. Today I'll be doing from uh, 3.30 to 5.30. Uh, we talk about everything we're talking about right here. We talk about trades. We talk about free agency. And it's all interactive. So you can go on there and we just chat back and forth and I message you, I talk to you, I talk guests on and it's much frolic. Might want to check it out. Tuesday, I do that five days a week, but Tuesdays and Thursdays, if you like evenings better, we do 5.30 to 7.30 Mountain, 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern. Check that out. All right, let's look at some of the happenings over the week and... uh, what we think of those things. Tell me in the comment section if you agree with me, disagree with me. You don't have to be kind. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. But if you want to be kind, that's cool too. All right. All right. Zach Hyman has an agreement in place with the Edmonton Oilers. Two agreements, actually. It's uh, five years, five million dollars for eight years, assuming the Toronto Maple Leafs trade the rights of Hyman before free agency to the Edmonton Oilers to provide them the ability to give them eight years. Because I don't know if you are all aware, in order to offer a player an eight year contract, they have to be in the in the uh, have the rights of that player if they don't they're not able to provide them an eight-year deal so toronto now if if they don't they have another deal in place for seven years at 5.5 um so basically the edmonton oilers are saying we want to give him eight years and if you trade us the pick trade us him the rights before free agency We'll give you a pick to compensate for what that is. Now, the thing that's difficult here is there is a uh, disagreement with the Toronto Maple Leafs as to what the pick may be. Apparently, uh, Toronto wants a second-round pick, and the Oilers want to give them a sixth-round pick. Interesting thing here because um, Toronto is basically using the leverage that I'm not going to give you free cap space because you're taking a player that, you know, wanting one of my players. And that's exactly what they're doing here. If they give them an eight-year deal, they get 500000 extra per year 
Edmonton's window right now is pretty much now. They want to win now. Um, and that extra half a million is going to help them a lot. And Mr. Dubas is like, I know it'll help you a lot. That's why I'm not taking a sixth for you. And he's, they're playing a bit of chicken where he'll say, I'll take nothing if you're going to give me a six. And he thinks that Edmonton will bend in the end and give them, I think, probably a third. I think they're going to get a third round pick out of this. They'll eventually make a deal that they'll get a third round pick out of it. And so Edmonton will be able to sign him for the eighth year. Now the question, of course, and I've discussed this on all kinds of forums out there, is this a good deal? And I started out thinking, no, it wasn't a good deal. I, I didn't. Hyman is a tough player. Uh, he's one of the best defensive wingers in the game. Let's, but get that right out there right away. Uh, he has been in Selkie conversations, deservedly so, as a winger, which is very difficult to do. He's a fantastic defensive center. And this is the one that really gets me on this. That, that, that is the aspect of Hyman that makes me think this deal might be worth it. Um, he probably would not. Let's look at his points here. Make sure you can see that all right. Uh, he probably would not get as many points as he has gotten on a lot of teams. I will give you that. Uh, and this is kind of the argument. Uh, in 2000, in 2016-17, he had 28 points in his first full year. Since then, he's had 40, 41 37 and 51 games. That was 41 and 71 games. 37 and 51 games. The last year, he's on a 66.30 goal pace. Now, the question has been here, and also he's 29 years old. So the question here is, you know, he's been with uh, Nylander. He's been with uh, Marner, and he's played with Matthews predominantly during his career. In fact, on that top line. Um, also, with my friend Peyton on the radio, go check him out. Fantastic. We, we looked it up, and he has a lot of second assists. So he's not really driving a line here. Now, a lot of teams out there do not have Matthews, and they don't have Marner. <laughs> you know, you dig the puck out. Bring it out to Marner. Marner passes to Matthews. You get a point. But the Edmonton Oilers do have something like that. They have McDavid. They have Dreisaitl. Uh, they have Hopkins. Not as much depth as Toronto. But if he can get the puck out to McDavid or whatever winger that he's playing, they're playing on that line to get it to McDavid, I think he can get similar points. Um and uh, like, as you saw, he's, incre he's increased in points every year. And he's one of the best defensive center de wingers in the league. So at $5 million now, I think it's fair value, really. Uh, at first I thought no. Um, but it, it might be a little high. If he was playing on a line, say, in uh, uh, Carolina with Ajo, is he going to get those points? those kind of points, maybe not. Or if he's in LA where, you know, they have an older Kopitar and not much of a winger, probably not. But I suppose you could say that for just about every player. But the fact that he is a uh, elite defensive winger, by the end of this contract, he'll be 35, 36 years old. Could be tough. This could be a buyout situation here for sure. But the thing is the Edmonton Oilers have a tough time bringing free agents here in they almost always have to overpay a little bit to bring people over because of the perceived small market. Uh, it's not perceived. It is a smaller market. It's cold in the winters. It's not the sexiest city in the world. All of those things. Just flat out, it's the truth. So Zach Hyman wants to go there. They're able to put him up long term. Short term. I think this deal looks not too bad, especially when you consider it's pretty likely they are not going to be able to get another winger out there to fill this role. If 
Mr. Holland did not get anybody in this draft. What do you think the view out there would be? Like um, the Edmonton Oilers fan base would lose their minds. I think this is probably the best the Oilers can get here. And I don't mind the deal at all. So, okay, let's move on. Also, a little, little, little tidbit there. Apparently, Todd Tyler Toronto is looking at Tyler Bertuzzi as a possible replacement. So take a look at that. Tro Tyler's from Toronto, and uh, he looks like he's been having difficulties with signing, getting a contract with Detroit, probably because he's always wanted to play for Toronto. We'll see what happens there. I said I would talk about the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they're showing interest in Dougie Hamilton. If you watch my videos on a regular basis, I did a free agent video not too long ago and I had Dougie Hamilton likely going to the New Jersey Devils. Um, now, since then, I'm going to do another one, but I'll give you a little bit more of a tidbit. I think you could possibly look at the Montreal Canadiens as well. However, um, th this comes out now from Larry Brooks of the United Post. This is Gavin Lee, by the way, who did this fine publication. Uh, he Larry Brooks of the New York Post writes that New Jersey Devils are emerging as a contender for Hamilton services and there is mutual interest. Uh, Brooks suggests a seven-year deal with an average annual value of $9 million. Seven-year deal at $9 million a year, pretty steep, but Hamilton has been in Norris conversations for the last three years. The difficulty with Hamilton up until now has been Apparently, he rubs some people the wrong way in the room. I don't know why that is. He's got a different personality, something of that nature, quirky, I don't know, maybe arrogant. I, I don't want to put too much on it because I don't know what it is. But he's bounced around quite a bit. He's gone from Boston to Calgary. Boston early in his career, where they said he doesn't want to be a Bruin. Then he goes to Calgary, and they discover they don't want him or enough to sign him a long term. Um, and then he ends up going to Carolina. And as you can see, they can't seem to work out a deal in Carolina. So he's going to New Jersey now. I think on paper, this is a fantastic move for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they did they did fantastic by, you know, drafting Ty Smith, trading for Adam Graves. And they also have Damon Severson in there, bringing Hamilton in uh, this point of their development for the next uh, for the next say seven years, I believe he's 28 years old, is probably a perfect time for him. He would for them because they are growing very fast. They have a strong forward, young strong forward group there. They're right on the precipice of being a very good team. Bringing Hamilton now now makes sense because their defense is lacking. And they really don't have prospects that are going to be ready at the time. I think that they're going to need them to be, to be in the contender status. So Hamilton, and that's the reason why I said it before, and that's why I say now, I think it's a good deal. Now we'll look at the Florida Panthers signing of, uh, or signing, sorry, trading for Sam Reinhardt. The deal here was... Um, Levi, Devin Levi, who was buried in Florida's goaltending depth roster, uh, not saying that means that he is a poor goaltender. He was fantastic at the World Junior Championships this last year. Seventh round pick, but not seventh round pick in the draft, but has progressed to a point where you could say that there's a really good chance he's going to be an NHL goaltender. Uh, obviously, Buffalo must think he is absolutely fantastic because they get a first and Levi in this deal. I really thought that there, there was going to be more than this in a trade. However, the first, our initial thought was that um, Reinhardt wasn't going to sign, wasn't committing to sign with whatever team he went to, say the Florida Panthers in this situation. In which case, they're really only getting him for one year, because I believe next year, maybe two. Reinhardt, 25. Yeah. Two years, he would be an unrestricted free agent. 
and uh, no guarantee of staying with Florida. But now I'm hearing that they are both in agreement that they could get traded. Now, uh, Reinhardt could have easily have just said, I am not going to commit to anybody. I'm not committing to Florida, all of those sort of things like that. And then told his agent to give them a little whisper. Hey, you know what? I, I, I'm going to sign with you, but I don't want my team to give, I don't want the team I'm going to, to give up too much because I want my team to be stronger. Right. I wonder if these sort of little games are being played and I wouldn't doubt that they are. Whatever the case may be, it may not matter if Devon Levi turns out to be as good as it's possible that he could become. If he becomes a number one goaltender, this deal doesn't look too bad. Also, next year's draft, the first overall, or for next year's draft, sorry, first overall, Florida definitely, unless everything collapses, won't be in that category. But it's a very deep draft. This will probably be a late first pick. But it is a very deep draft, and they could pick somebody up very good. I just thought there would be more here. Uh, I, I I was looking at other teams that might get involved, and I thought they would get a center they could play now, a uh, first-round pick, and then maybe a prospect like De- Devon, uh, Devin Levi. But it, that didn't transpire. Whatever it is, it's a fantastic trade for the Florida Panthers. A late first-round pick in a deep draft for a team that is going basically in win-now mode. Uh, Let's take a peek here if we can at Florida Panthers' uh, depth chart after that trade. You have Verhege, Barkov, Duclair, Huberto, Bennett, Sam Reinhardt. As you can see, they have Sam Reinhardt on the wing, but he can play center. And I would love that. I would say Huberto with Reinhardt. This guy's got an, Reinhardt has an amazing shot. In the second half last year, I think he was scoring at almost a 50 goal pace. Uh, and if you had a guy like Huberto passing you the puck as a centerman that's a shoot first player, I love Bennett. He did well uh, as a center there in uh, Florida. I would probably try him on the wing here since he can play all three positions and see how that works out. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do exactly. But then Vitrano, Anton Lundell, who looks like a beast coming out of uh, Sweden, uh, and uh, Patrick Hornfuss. It's That's a solid lineup. Fantastic. Probably need to add a winger, but excellent, excellent trade for the Florida Panthers. Uh, Zito has not made too many poor moves here, and this certainly isn't one of them. Fantastic. I'll go a little bit. Tony Giangelo placed on unconditional waivers. I really hope whatever is going on with D'Angelo's mind that it's he changes his view because it's really derailing his career. That's all I'll say about that. And finally, no, not finally. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this on two fronts. Uh, the Blue Jackets swap Jacob Borchek and Cam Atkinson. This deal is almost a wash. Um, I think Philadelphia has done well here to pick up a shooter. They needed a shooter. Cam Atkinson's a small forward, and I've listened. I'm a Philadelphia Flyers fan, and I, I talk to a lot of Philadelphia Flyers fans. They're not very happy that they got another small forward, but this guy can shoot, and he's going to play with uh, Couturier, who is an underrated passer, or Hayes, who's a very good passer. They needed a shooter. There was way too much passing going on in Philadelphia last year, and not enough shooting. Also, there has been talk about a culture change in Philadelphia. Jacob Voracek is a very abrupt, uh, brisk, I guess you could say, maybe grading type player. He's very opinionated and he's very upfront. Uh, and I think it's kind of worn on the Philadelphia room a little bit. So he gets to go to Columbus where he came from to begin with. Um, and Columbus gets a player who they can use with Patrick Lyon. A Lyon a needs somebody to get him the puck as well. Jacob Borchek loves to pass. Lyon a loves to shoot. Good combination. And they still need to sign Lyon a, So they need to show them that they're getting the types of players that are going to help him play his game. 
Um, I don't know if you heard, but Lion A came out and really kind of slammed Tortorella, saying that he wasn't letting him play his game. And he's being very, people say he's being very stubborn, but he's very straightforward in saying he's going to play his game. So he's going to find a place where that is possible. What is Lion A's game? Lion A's game to get his puck on the stick and shoot. And he's going to take risks in the defensive zone. So if you don't like that, you're not going to like him. Jacob Orchak is actually a very underrated defensive player. So I think that would line up well. Good trade for both teams. I'm going to give it for now the winner to, to Philadelphia Flyers, mostly because they saved $2 million in cap space here. Uh, Voracek is making 8.35, which is actually pretty rich for the point production he put up. Uh, and Cam Atkinson's making 6. Point, uh, uh, 6.35. So... I'm going to give it to uh, Philadelphia Flyers for now. Cap Cam Atkinson has been close to a 40-goal scorer in his past. Jacob Voracek looks like he's kind of settled into about a 50-point, maybe 60-point player in the right situation. Um, both, I think, for talent, maybe on equal levels. Cam Atkinson's a little younger as well. So I'm going to give it to Philly for now, but we'll see. Kekalainen is a brilliant general manager, a brilliant hockey mind. Jacob Forchek could end up crushing there in Columbus. We'll see. So, and next, I'm going to go now to the NHL Network. And uh, we're going to look at the final, uh, another trade that happened. Uh, Flyers trade for Ristolainen. Um, doesn't say who wrote this, just fill it by Philadelphia Flyers at NHL Flyers. But I really like this right up. So I wanted to talk about it, about this wrist align and trade. Uh, now, analytics people will say that this wrist align and trade after getting Ellis is a poor trade for the Philadelphia Flyers. They gave up an awful lot. Uh, they gave up their first round pick, which was this year's draft, was the 13th overall selection. Uh, uh, and Robert Hag and a 2023 second round pick for Rasmus Ristolainen. Um, Ristolainen's entering the final season of a $5.4 million AAV contract, which means in order for them to, uh, he's going to be a restricted free agent with arbitration rights. So next year, just to uh, be able to continue in conversation talks, uh, just to qualify him, it's going to be around six and a half million of an offer that they have to give Ristolina in order to keep him. Fairly rich for what he is pretty much what he has done in his uh, career so far. Um, we'll go, we'll continue here. He becomes a free agent in the summer. A rest, uh, oh, and is a potential unrestricted free agent in the summer of 2022. I apologize, it's not a restricted free agent. So they got to give him a deal this year. If they lose him, they definitely have lost his trade. Um, I imagine there's been talk with their agent about this, though. Uh, Buffalo demanded a first-round pick, as we already said. Uh, Ristolainen is a polarizing player. Most NHL pro scouts and other hockey people, in quotes, have long been advocates of the Finnish defenseman's physical abilities. And I would have to agree. Yeah, absolutely. Physically, the guy's got all the tools. He's fast. He has a huge shot. He's willing to hit. Uh, he hits when he when he, sometimes when he shouldn't. It he has all the tools. Most opponents detest playing him, playing against him. And Philadelphia sure needs that. The analytics community, on their other hand, as I just talked about, is very are almost unanimously critical of the player because his underlying numbers have been very poor, and they have them. Uh, right, he's righty, which is huge. He's big, which is huge. Uh, he's also durable. He doesn't miss too many games. Um, he plays with snarl and physicality. That is true. He's a very physical player. He himself says that he's a player that teams hate to play against. He likes to play that role. And Philadelphia certainly needs 
all of this on their roster. Um, I would start him on a third pairing role and try to build it. Now, what do I think of this trade? Uh, or this is the analytics I'll say here quick. Poor numbers in a variety of commonly tracked analytics, shot attempt differentials, scoring chance differentials, on off ice relative numbers. He has had a rough traditional plus minus numbers even, and he has. Uh, but he was brought up in a Buffalo system that seems to be unanimously poor at developing players. Uh, Rasmus Dahlin, when he was drafted, was considered on the generational side and so far hasn't even come close to that. Pretty much every player that they've developed, middle stat, uh, Tage Thompson sort of came over from St. Louis. Um, even Eichel has not progressed the way that they had perceived that they should pro progress. Uh, they ha he, he came up and was put in the shutdown role almost at 19 years old in Buffalo on a very bad defense. To put it bluntly, as the writer says, the player was largely put in a position of fail to fail because the Sabres had little choice so far, little choice to play him. And that's true. So Philadelphia is going to give this guy a shot. They're going to work with him and basically treat him like a player that has been kind of mismanaged and now try to get the best out of the tools that he still possesses and it's going to be awesome to watch if that works out for him it's a gamble cliff fletcher or chuck fletcher has been known to gamble and he's doing it here if it works could be absolutely fantastic if it doesn't it could look really bad i i think that the that the wrist alignment has the desire to become a better player i'm leaning that he becomes a better player in Philadelphia, and this turns out okay. But I agree, it's a lot to give up for that kind of a risk. So I say Buffalo really kind of wins this trade for now. But we'll see in the future how it turns out. Okay, that's my full 42, boys and girls. You got, uh, that's all I have to give. I will sell you this. If you hit the subscribe button, I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace sent directly to your door. Perlocopter by, by uh, Melissa or Hernandez. And anybody who comments in the comment section from now on, I'm going to send you some fine, fine pearls. Ground by Helen, our resident pearl grinder. Her, she's like 78, she's uh, sorry, 87 years old now. Still grinding pearls to this day. Grind you up. Put down in the comment section what color of pearls you would wish. And I will provide them for you, my friends. Here is some community pearls for you. Rainbow. Rainbow flavored. Here we go. Ready? You want them? There you go. Wait a second. You couldn't see me there. Let me do that again. There you go. Rainbow flavored pearls for the whole land. Have a great day. Okay, bye.